it's an interesting year because there's there's signs that are very positive um, and the signs that are very negative in terms of the um, economic outlook so so making predictions is is always a little bit challenging but um, I think we'll see in in Asia at least a return to um, a lot of work around uh, real estate financing I think there's a big opportunity there particularly recently there's been a uh, removal of some of the restrictions if, around borrowing for, for the large Chinese uh, property developers, which should have an um, incentivizing effect on, on that market. Um, there's still issues in the market, that, such as the high interest rate, I'd expect continue to climb, albeit at a you know, slightly tapered pace um, for the rest of this year. That would probably affect deal flow in terms of event-driven financing, uh, like a leverage buyout, where the um, uh, economic um, conditions need to be kind of closely, closely analysed. I think the APEC region will continue to be affected by the geopolitics in the region. Um, the rising interest rate, which will continue for the next two, two quarters, um, inflation, supply chain disruption and the slowing of growth, especially in mainland China. There will be continue to be a distressed funds throughout Asia, so that would also create opportunities for the offshore market. Although currently 85% of the ESG-linked debt issuance have occurred in Europe and North America, there's evidence that ESG-linked financing have gained some traction in other areas too. There is a Chinese real estate company, there's a Japanese real estate group and an Indian electrical corporation. They have brought or are planning to bring certain sustainable and green bonds to the market. Well, in contrast to green bonds, general sustainability linked financing have been used for various corporate purposes. So this has further opened up the market to a wider spread of issuers. I think the opportunities will come from China. Um, in, in Hong Kong, China remains the, the driving force for the, for, for the market. And um, the, the zero COVID policy in, in China has had a, a slightly stifling effect on markets in, in recent times and um, has also, in addition to other factors, had the effect of, of deterring uh, international investment. So I think China's opening up um, has renewed people's appetite for investment in China. At the moment, it's general corporate finance and refinancings is, is probably the, the leading sector. Margin loans, um, which are equity-backed um, uh, lending products, are, are not so popular at the moment because the stock market's highly volatile. Event-driven transactions such as leverage buyouts um, or any form of acquisition, um, th there's not a high volume of those transactions at the moment just because interest rates are, are, are very high and also at the same time asset prices still remain quite high. So I would expect that the, the, the main kind of product areas will be kind of more conventional markets such as, such as general corporate finance.